Welcome to storytelling. Welcome to storytelling. Welcome to storytelling. Welcome to storytelling. Mark. Welcome to storytelling. Welcome, Mark, to storytelling. Thank you, Daniel. What a lovely intro. And welcome everyone else. Oh, Daniel, to that's storytelling. so lovely, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Specifically, Daniel. Sorry. Don't want to hear Enjoy that one, Anthony Mark. <laughs> Welcome to storytelling. I look like I've wet myself. Looks like. We've got a pretty exciting update. This is our new set that we built uh, a few days ago. Uh, we like it. We're going to get some extra little bits of bobs to go around. Also, we are massively increasing our YouTube output. Recently, Woo! we're doing a one video every two weeks. We're going to be doing two videos a week. That's yeah. like four times what we did before. It is. We're quadrupling, Andrew. Wow, that's a big word. It's going to be mad. Welcome um, to storytelling. Also, <laughs> another big part of it as well is we're obviously having to keep two meters apart. Uh, we've measured it all, so we are two meters apart. And even though this will be released probably when it's back to one meter, we filmed it when it was two. Well, so we're just sure yet. We'll just gradually get closer and closer and closer until one day we're all sat on that table. Uh, uh, <laughs> Welcome to the world's living room. Uh, pineapple does go on pizza. No. The memes and poster wall. Uh, the palette, which eventually will fill with trinkets. Um, and the four of us. And these are our Lego people. Have we ever introduced the fans to the Lego? This is Mark and Clarissa. Oh, this yeah, is focusing. me and Dan, and Dan's very small. Why am I so small? Because I picked up the wrong legs. This is storytelling part two. We did um, storytelling part one a little while ago. We kind of told our favorite stories from the road. Most of them were just telling Dan the things that happened before he was here. <laughs> uh, but this time, since we're back from quarantine, we're going to tell our best quarantales. Quarantales. Our best quarantales. So anyone's favorite story from something Story from the lockdown Omicron. When we were in isolation. Um, well, everyone, here's the headline story. I got injured and couldn't walk for two weeks because of something I did over quarantine. Let yeah, me man. tell you more. Well, I was staying at home a lot, which you should be doing. But then Boris Johnson said, well, now you can go outside a bit. So myself and my girlfriend, we decided actually we'll go to the beach and uh, enjoy a lovely socially distant beach day. It's actually quite easy to do at the beach because there was hardly anyone there, which was very nice. Because of the massive ocean. <laughs> I'll go this side of the ocean and you go that side of the ocean. <laughs> this so, is a lovely date! Naturally, as a little Scottish boy, I have very easily burnable skin. So I came prepared with Factor 30 sun cream to scoosh all over my body and to rub it in. To what? Have you never used scoosh before? Scoosh. <laughs> I've never scoosh. heard that in my life! Well, here's a Scottish word you're all about to learn. Scoosh. The parts of my body that were exposed, I covered it in sun cream. Wait, wait, wait. How naked were you? <laughs> Please detail which parts of your body were exposed. The way you phrased that made it sound like you were, you know. I went to a nudist beach, did I not mention that before? No, that was. I did. I did. Ah, you scooched off your clothes. I see. see. <laughs> so, um, I put on sun cream, however, one important part that I missed was the top of this foot. And then I get home and I'm watching, I think probably Brooklyn Nine-Nine when I get back to my house. I was like, well, this is very painful. Hmm, what's cold? I know, ice. So I go to my fridge, I go to my freezer and I get some ice and I think, well, I'm not just gonna put ice straight on it. That's probably a dumb idea. So I put it in a, what I think is a thick towel and dab away at my left foot because that was the most painful one. It turns out the next morning, this towel was by far not thick enough and I had this massive like swollen foot and blisters. So instead of instead of sunburn, oh. in, in, in an attempt to cure it, I give myself the opposite, which was ice burn. <laughs> um, I was unable to walk the next day. I had to limp everywhere because there was just so much pressure coming from my foot. Um, foolishly, I thought, well, I'll just hand, hand sanitize some scissors and just pop them, which I did. <laughs> no. Whoa, 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 yeah. what? So I got some scissors, hand sanitized them, just. Oh you, my you, know that, you know that's not what you do to blisters. Well, I know that now. Blister, blisters are a good thing. They protect the raw skin. You it meant to leave you them. You literally did everything wrong. <laughs> blisters are your body's natural reaction. And and. and... <laughs> oh, I've got I've got sunburn. You know what will fix that? Thermal shock. Oh, I've got blisters. What will fix that? Knives. <laughs> you don't scoosh blisters with oh. knives, Andy. No scooshing. No scooshing, everyone. I thought, oh, this would be better, I'll drain the fluid out and then I can continue to walk. Which worked for maybe about six hours. Um, then it just started to swell again and gradually throughout that following week, um, all the little small blisters became one big blister. Some of you guys will know Brightline, Joe Barrett is a drummer from Brightline, me and him are very good friends and his wife and his lodger work in the NHS so they gave me a phone call saying, okay, we've heard that you've got um, dodgy foot and you can't walk on it. I was like, ah, it'll be fine, I'll leave it another week. So I'll leave it another week, by which point we come into work 
And these guys will testify, I'm yeah. unable to walk anywhere. <laughs> Joe, Joe phones again and he says, our lodger, whose name is Gabby, shout out Gabby, says, I want to see a picture of your foot because she's a nurse. So I send her a picture of my foot. And it's only when I see it through the lens of my camera, I realize, oh, actually, maybe there might be something wrong with it. Why wasn't the alarm bell not being able to walk? <laughs> so she came and like took me to A&E. I went straight in, straight up to reception, right. and I was like, hello, um, I'm an idiot. I, <laughs> and they all have a look at it, and they're asking me the story, and they're like, yeah, you've done pretty much everything wrong. We knew that! <laughs> That's funny, man. So essentially, they, they, they caught it right at the perfect moment because it was about to become very, very, very badly infected. It was showing signs of early infection. So I got some antibiotics and limped around for another week, and here I am today with a fully almost healed foot. Don't ever, ever, ever miss out sun cream on your foot. Yeah. There's so much wrong with that story. I can't even sanitize a pair of scissors and just went at your foot. <laughs> the ice was crazy, but I understand how you got there. It's the it's the stabbing you're at yourself. Well, here's another level. Here's my logic. I thought, well, that's swollen, so I'll drain the fluid. The fluid's there to protect the raw skin. That's why it's there. Well, I know that now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What Andy. story? So I would like to nominate someone to go next. I want to hear Dan's story. Oh god. Welcome to storytelling. I don't know if I can quite follow that with the same level of stupidity, <laughs> but I don't quite know how to say this. I got stuck in like a loft hole thing in my room for like 40 <laughs> minutes. I needed to make a vocal booth in my bedroom to do some <laughs> recording. So in my in my room, above the doorway, there is like this little loft hatch thing and it's got a ladder that you pull down. And I thought, that would be great. I can use this ladder and a duvet and a, and a complex system of pillows to form myself a vocal booth. You know, like the professionals. <laughs> so I pull I pull the ladder down, down from this loft hatch and I realize that one half of the ladder has come off the kind of tracks that it's on. I'm like, Oh man, I think I've I think I've broken the ladder. I bet I better fix it. I lodge with the family. I don't live by myself. I'm like, oh, I've broken the ladder. I can't fix them down here. I better climb up the ladder into the hatch and try and fix it. So I climb up this very very dodgy ladder that's like rocking because it's not properly attached. I get up there and well, I can't fix it. <laughs> I'm up there. I realise I need a screwdriver to essentially take it apart and put it back on the rails. So I'm like, oh, I'll just get back down. Nope, the ladder is not safe. And every time I put a tiny amount of weight on it, the whole thing like bows. I'm sitting in this loft hatch, which is really small. I'm like crouched over like this. I'm like, I'm gonna die here. <laughs> I can see my phone on my desk down in my room. And I'm shouting at it like, okay, Google. <laughs> I really hope you've set off someone's Android phone at home. <laughs> okay, Google, remind me at 2 a.m. Dan is a legend. I, I spent 40 minutes trying to fix this ladder, which involves trying to bring the ladder up into a hatch that I am in. How big is the hatch? Not like, big, big enough for a ladder or a person. Okay. <laughs> in the end, I just jumped. I put like one foot on the ladder and I just <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide which story is more stupid right now. Oh, Andy. Oh, definitely mine. And Andy did <laughs> several things wrong. And <laughs> done a couple big things. Mine was with a good heart. Mine was to fix fix his ladder that I oh, thought I broke. Andy was there to fix his foot. I oh. think it does go on pizza. I don't like cooked pineapple. You, don't, you do like on pizza. I do like on pizza. Okay. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite thing, but I take it or leave it. Don't really mind. Yeah, I'm there. If someone brings a Hawaiian Hawaiian pizza. I'm like, I'm, sure I'll, I'll, I'll have a slice, but I'm not gonna. I wouldn't order it from Domino's. 100%. It's not. It's not elite enough. It's, it's, it. it's the lasagna of pizza. It's the lasagna of pizza. <laughs> so, so can anyone be more stupid than Andy or myself? Mark, you do a lot of stupid things. I do. You must have done something stupid. I did. However, the story I prepared today is not a silly one. If I thought about it, there probably would be several <laughs> stupid things. I lead a youth group uh, at my church. Uh, and so we've been like playing games on Zoom and stuff, having stupid amounts of fun. We did like a whole Taskmaster challenge, which you can see coming up soon, our version of it. But one of the things that like has been one of my favorite things about lockdown has been going through the Bible with my youth group. And we've gone through loads of like different books of the Bible and sections of books of the Bible. And like we've read through loads of stuff and it's really encouraged me because seeing the, the kids in my group starting to engage with the Bible and like these incredible stories. So we read through the book of Jonah. Now I'm sure a lot of people will be familiar with the book of Jonah because it's a story about the guy who gets swallowed up by a whale when he's running away from God. God. And that's normally all we hear about Jonah. But actually, there's another chapter at the end of Jonah that's actually quite dark. 
The book of Jonah is three chapters long. It's a lovely story. It's a story about a guy who is terrified of the responsibility of life and God showing him that he can and has the ability to do what God has called him to. And then him claiming that responsibility and seeing a whole city turn away from being really horrible and nasty people into people who follow God and try and live life their best. That's a lovely story. However, chapter four hits, right? And then Jonah, he gets well angry that God saved the people because he hates the city. Turns out Jonah was a racist, right? The end, twist. Jonah's like, uh, I don't want to live if this is the life I have, so I'd rather die. And then the book sort of ends. The guy who we maybe think of the hero actually isn't the hero. The hero of the story is two people, it's God, and it's a city that turns away, not Jonah. Jonah's actually a really broken guy, but God chooses to use him because he knows his voice is going to be heard. And he says, man, even if Jonah is going to like That's go and tell people that God is amazing and God loves them, and he doesn't like the city, then what else can he do? Like, and, and how else can God use, like, me, someone who's broken and messed up and has made loads of stupid mistakes in my life? Like, you literally wouldn't believe. That, that's crazy, how can God use me? That was just such an amazing journey to take with the young people at my church, to take them through and go, you know what, even if there's stuff you don't like about yourself, even if there's things that make you uncomfortable about the world, or even sometimes maybe even uncomfortable about the Bible, Actually, we know that God is good. We know that God is love. And we know that he desperately wants to be in relationship with us and wants to use us for the good of the world. That's mental. Mm -hmm. Absolutely mental. So to be able to go through that with them was awesome. Get out of your hatch and go change your city. Okay, you're not normally quite as stupid as us. You'll normally have a lot more common sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Do you have any stupid lockdown stories? I have, however, it wasn't necessarily me that was stupid. I will take you back to February of 2020. Wow. Pre, wow. pre lockdown, pre wow. all of this craziness. Remember that? Do you remember gigs? Remember we used to play gigs and see other people? So, February 2020. Uh huh. And one day, there was a great big storm. And basically, one morning, um, my housemate saw a trampoline fly down the road towards all of our cars. Three cars were at the end of my road and basically a neighbour's trampoline had lifted up because of the wind, gone over the hedge, all the way down the oh, road, wow. smashed into our car. Like oh, a humongous trampoline as well, like one of the massive ones. If there had been someone there, they would have fully died. It was, it was intense. <laughs> wow! If you were a human and you saw it coming, would you just like aim for the bouncy bit? Then the neighbours came out and they were like, I'm really sorry and stuff. And we got our cars fixed and it was all good. It was a lot of money, but it was fine. <laughs> During lockdown, a couple of months ago, the wind Came back up again. <laughs> so windy. <laughs> Crazy. Wow, all these trees. And I was going on a walk and I got back from my walk and I saw these same neighbours out on the street staring at my car. I was like, that's a bit weird. Why are they looking at my car? And they came to me and they were like, our trampoline hit your car. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know, it's, it's totally fine. It's all forgotten no. about. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. And they were like, no, no, no. Our trampoline has hit your car again. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hilarious because the chances of the tra a new trampoline, not the same one, the old one got. It's a different trampoline. A different trampoline <laughs> in their what happened to the old one? Did they have to put it down? Came over the hedge, down the road, all the way to my car again, which was parked what? at the same spot as last time, Unreal. and scratched it up. So really, okay. it's your fault for parking in the same spot. <laughs> I feel like the tagline for this video needs to be: Do all trampolines hate clay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think they might. I think they do. So did it hit everybody else's car the second time? No, it's just my car. Just yours. There. Okay, that's absolutely the title of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Play versus trampoline. I just can't believe it. In the comments, I want you to leave a comment to see who you think would win in a fight between Clarissa and a trampoline. Sorry, a, a trampoline's like sit. They always come in pairs. Is that the deal? No, there are two of them. I find your lack of balance disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> and technically, trampolines always give you the high ground. <laughs> oh. Oh, memes yeah. upon memes. Yeah. Thank you for watching storytelling. If you want to see more stories, let us know in the comments because we're full of them. If you um, want to see more stories, let us know in the comments because we are full of them. If you want to hear more like, of our favourite moments from the Bible as well, let us know in the comments because we'd love to share those things. And put it in the comments if you want Andy to stab his feet again. Ah. Also, I'm aware I promised to slap Andy in the next Ooh. video. However, Ooh. two metres causes a problem oh. uh, for the slapping. I want to tell you the slap will happen. Uh, there will be a slapping. However, I want to let you know that it will. May maybe it's going to happen when Andy least expects it. Maybe it's going to happen in another video. But what I will promise you is there will be a slap. Generic. Goodbye. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it brightened your day a little bit. There's a lot going on in the world at the moment, isn't there? And it can be easy to feel hopeless sometimes. The pressure can build around us and 
Life can just be so hard, right? And you know what, I'm willing to bet you don't need me to tell you that this world is broken. You yourself may even be asking the question, if God is real, what is he doing about it? Well, I've got to tell you there is good news. God has done and is doing something about it. The Bible tells us that Jesus took all of the brokenness in the world on himself. And at the end of all things, one day, God will put everything that was broken back together again. And it will be more beautiful than it was before it was broken. This is a reality of what will happen. And if you want to be a part of that, the Bible says all you've got to do is put your trust in Jesus and he will make you also brand new. If you want to know more, hit the link in the description. See you next time.